My name is Troy Margri. I'm a principal investigator um, at the National Institute for Medical Research in Mill Hill in North London. I'm a systems neuroscientist and uh, we're interested in understanding how the circuitry of the brain gives rise to the complex functions that the brain needs to perform. Francis Crick is one of the, the founding fathers or, or mothers if you like of uh, modern genetics and uh, reluctantly I, I have to admit that genetics is actually probably the most useful tool that we have as systems neuroscience. At this point in time we're really looking at fundamental questions, how the brain wires up and what's the consequence of that wiring diagram. And to do that we use a variety of different kinds of tools. We use uh, electrophysiological methods, so that means uh, little wires that we place, place into the brain to record the, the, the activity of individual cells. And we also use optical methods, so we use microscopes that allow us to focus into the, into the live brain and monitor the activity and the, and the spatial organization of, of many hundreds of neurons at a time. Genetics has really come to the, to the forefront of, of, of systems neuroscience, and rightfully so. It enables us to do so many things. It enables us to label specific sets of cells. It enables us to track specific pathways of connectivity through the brain. And believe it or not, now we can even um, use genetics to drive the expression of particular proteins in the, in the membranes of the neurons in the brain. And these proteins are sensitive to light. They're, they're essentially proteins that are in our retinas. So we can flash now, use blue light and flash this into the brain and only those cells that are expressing these particular uh, proteins on their membrane will be activated. We're recording using a microscope the activity from a number of cells at the same time and you can see the activity here and this changes in response to a stimulus, a, a video that we show the mouse to the eye which is coming up here. It's almost impossible to do experiments on human brain tissue and so that's why we moved to the mouse model. So we can take a gene that we know and we can insert that gene into the mouse genome. The end goal, if you like, is to actually understand what goes wrong in the brain when we suffer some sort of trauma or we might, we might suffer some disease like Parkinson's or, or Alzheimer's disease. And in order to be sort of rigorous and quantitative about what might go wrong uh, during these pathologies, uh, we need to basically have a very, very detailed map of the connectivity and function of, of, of the circuits that comprise, comprise the brain. So we're playing a small role, if you like, in generating this large functional atlas of the mouse brain with the view to use that to basically compare and, and monitor healthy brains and diseased brains. We've been uh, working uh, with our colleagues in America to build a special microscope that allows us to optically and physically section the entire mouse brain. So we can go home on, on, on a Monday evening and come back in two days later and the entire brain has been scanned and, and imaged. And for example, this, this product is incredibly useful potentially to people in the clinic. So people who are cutting uh, histological sections of, of tumors and, and so forth. This is a very manual time, um, time intensive process. So technological developments that come out of basic research are also highly, highly translatable and of economic benefit, uh, obviously to not only the MRC, and, but also the, the UK uh, and, and taxpayers. There was, there was a, a day, well, a year ago or so, when we were, for the first time, we were able to record from a particular kind of cell in the brain and deliver genes into that one cell. And those genes enabled us to now come back into the brain a few days later and deliver a virus. Now the virus could only infect the cell that we recorded from because it had this special gene expressed. And the virus then infected that cell and spread through the brain to label only those cells that were connected onto that cell. And the day that this worked, we came in and we looked down the microscope and we saw these beautiful labeled cells. We knew we were the first, person, we were the first people in history to see that. And it, it's, 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 it's days like that that really, where you feel like you're really making progress, they're the days that, that, that you remember. I think the UK is very fortunate in, in that it has an institute like this and uh, it can build teams, research teams like mine, that come from very diverse uh, and rich backgrounds. The MRC um, has decided to invest basically across a, a very broad sort of portfolio of research in the UK. The MRC also recognized that there's a place for uh, what they call blue sky research. This basically enables people like me to go in and ask questions about, for example, how our brain wires up that may not have any immediate benefit 
Um, but the MRC recognises that it should invest not only in, in the immediate future, but in the medium and in, in the long term future. And, and that, that primarily is, is why, why I, I moved from Australia and decided to, to come to London and, and, and work in London.